Next component to realign is the carriage. So this is the most challenging part to realign. Um, we've got the sliding surface for the table and then the surface that slides onto the knee there and these all need to be at 90 degrees to each other and they need to be, need to be flat to each other as well and obviously they need to mate with the table uh, and mate with the knee. Um, so the first job on this is to scrape these top surfaces so I've um, lightly scraped over uh, and I've taken a file just taken a ridge off there uh, and this is the the first uh, bluing pattern that you can see uh, we've got the classic hump in the middle um, where the table's been rolling over this and worn the, the ends down um, so I'm going to roughly scrape this in from the surface plate and then once it's uh, roughly scraped in and there's blue all the way to the ends um, what I'll do is I'll blue at the table and use the table as the template to finish it off so I've very roughly scraped uh, these ways um, and I've got blue to sort of nearly the edge, not quite the edge uh, and that was just using uh, the little surface plate so that's a lot lighter and easier to manoeuvre than the, the table that sits on here um, so I've just got a, a roughly cut it with that uh, and now the next job is to uh, take the actual plate, sorry the actual table and blue that up uh, and use that to, to finalise the um, uh, the scraping of this surface. Uh, I do know that the plate is, is sorry the table is pretty um, flat in this direction but there is a slight slope that way and a slight slope that way but about, about two tenths um, so the first print I expect to see uh, heavier print on this surface than the outside surface uh, so we'll scrape that into true alignment so this is the pattern without any further scraping as you can tell the this inside edge is slightly higher as, as expected uh, but there is a reasonable coverage if you look closely you can see there's spots all the way across uh, and the same is true for that so we'll, we'll scrape these properly flat now or at least properly lined up, properly aligned with the uh, the mating surface. When I expected the carriage a bit closer I realised that uh, these clearance, what should be clearance surfaces here are getting very very close. I don't think it's touching yet but I think before I finish the scraping off on this, before I really start the scraping on this surface here, uh, I need to recut these maybe five thou lower just to create a clearance. Um, and out of interest, uh, while setting it up on the mini machine, I, uh, I ran an indicator along this surface just to see what sort of wear there was there. So we're seeing about a thou drop off here and a thou drop off there. Uh, so it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll just machine five thou off this to make sure we've we've always got a clearance there and we're never touching this. Uh, and then we'll carry on the job of scraping these two top surfaces. So I ground up a little fly cutter and I've cut the clearance in there. I ended up taking about 15 thou off just to uh, make sure if there's any wear in the future then it doesn't end up uh, contacting that bottom surface. So I've finished off scraping the top of the carriage. I scraped that surface, that surface and, and now that surface uh, and that was done against the, against the table. Um, so next job is to look at the gib strip that fits in there. So I've rubbed the strip against the blued surface and you can see that uh, it's not very flat. I've got a little bit of contact in the corner there, a bit of contact top and bottom there, a bit of contact at this end. Um, if we flip this over you might be able to see a bit of light through there, or maybe not. <laughs> um, no! So I'm going to try and flatten that out by peening. So I've peened the surface of the gib, you can see. Peened it there, and there, and then on the other side. There, there. So I just peened it on my little post anvil. 
uh, and that seems to have straightened it out. So after peening and filing down the high spots, um, this is where we have we have nearly continuous contact all the way along. So the next job is to break up this big patch and uh, uh, break it down to smaller spots. So I've finished scraping the gib. Uh, there's not perfect distribution, but the thing's so flexible it's very difficult. Uh, the pattern changes every time you you print it. So um, yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. The important thing is it's reasonable distribution from top to bottom. So I've machined off uh, about eight and a half thou um, off the back of the rack just to compensate for the uh, wear in the table and then me scraping it flat and the wear in the saddle and me scraping that flat as well. So we'll, uh, that's where I estimate uh, I've taken off. Uh, we'll see how well that runs. We can always take a couple more thou off. Um, just see if it runs any better. Uh, a few years ago I made this straight edge uh, and that was used to uh, scrape the tool and cutter grinder that I had uh, and that was cut from this uh, motor mount bracket. Um, this is a bit too wide, I don't really want to trim it down because it's a useful size. Um, so I've cut another bit off that bracket and we'll machine this up and scrape this bit this to, uh, to make a thinner version of this straight edge. This is what the straight edge looks like once we've uh, machined it from that piece of cast iron. So uh, we've got a groove in there for the clearance from the other side. Uh, and then we've machined the, the back and the bottom. Um, so I just need to take those edges off, clean it up a bit, uh, and then probably heat treat it and then scrape it. So I'll pop the straight edge in the uh, chimney and we'll get a good fire in there and then we'll let it burn down and then we'll just uh, let it sit in the ashes overnight and that should stress relieve it. This is a view of the final finished straight edge and you can see I've scraped the top and also relieve this a little bit more. Uh, it's pretty rough looking but um, it's very flat on the bottom so that's really what counts. Um, so, on to the scraping of the V-ways. The first job of scraping these double V-ways is to create two reference planes, uh, vertical reference planes. So we have one here, uh, we have one here, so they're flat, or parallel, should I say, that way, reference to the plate, they're not necessarily uh, parallel with each other, or at least on the same plane. Um, so we're going to use those then to scrape this first V-way square to this front surface and again parallel to uh, the underside of the table. So I've uh, got the arrangement set up to measure uh, this V-way relative to uh, or perp perpendicularity to the front face of the table and also the top surface of the table. This is a bit of a complicated setup, um, so I'll try and run through it. So we have the back resting on this reference way that we scraped earlier. We have the front roller in the V way, uh, and then we have the first indicator referencing uh, a DIN zero square that's clamped to the front face of the table and the second indicator that is uh, referencing the top surface of the plate. Um, so I've checked this quite a repeatable arrangement despite it's quite a gainy appearance um, and it seems to uh, seems to work quite well um, in terms of measurements, what we have is about three thou difference in terms of height between this end and this end, which ties up with what we saw on this way. Uh, and we have just under one thou in terms of 
this direction. Um, so the first thing I'm going to try and tackle is the um, out of parallelism with this this surface here. So I've done some initial heavy scraping on this, um, and the result is um, vertically. I'm fairly flat now, I've taken that three thou out on the majority of it, um, but I've made it slightly worse in that direction. So relative to that front face of the table, this runs out by about one thou. Um, so you can see that when I show you the two dials. So now what I need to do is take some out of there and take some out of there. That means I can skew this back this way without affecting it that way. Now it's a bit of a challenge to get your head around where to scrape, uh, but you have to treat these two as two completely separate surfaces um, rather than one surface. So I've finished this scraping on this leeway. Um, so vertically I've got it within about a tenth and horizontally it's within about four tenths um, uh, or two tenths for most of the way and then we've got a bit of a drop off here so maximum four tenths. Uh, obviously the most important one is the vertical one. Um, I did fiddle around to see if I can get it better. All I could do is make it worse. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, now the next job is to make this parallel with it. So this is the next setup. Uh, we've got the roller in the V-way that we've already scraped uh, and we have the contact on this reference surface that we've scraped. Uh, so again the, the way to resolve this issue is to treat this surface first get that parallel and aligned with this uh, and then treat this surface um, so the indicator is running along that unscraped surface there uh, and we're getting about a thou and a half here and about a thou at this end um, so I'll do some scraping and see how good we can get that so after a quick two passes with the scraper and a uh, heavy stone over, you can see you've got the, the normal wear pattern in the middle of the ways. So we'll, we'll take this down and get even distribution uh, and then try and get it measuring uh, parallel to the uh, reference surface and the, the guiding way here. Uh, so this surface is now scraped and uh, I can't really measure any area error between this and I'm now moving on to this surface. And it's a similar story to the previous one. It's high here uh, and very high here. By very high, I mean about a thou um, above the lowest point here. So I go through that and scrape that flat again. So just showing a view of the setup here. Um, it's again riding on this reference surface. And I've just turned the indicator around so that the uh, the indicator tip is running against this surface here. So I've completed scraping the carriage. Uh, you can see that surface, those two surfaces, those two surfaces and that surface are all complete. Um, so now the final scraping job of mating this to the top of the knee.